Okay, okay, so we learned about momentum. What is momentum? Excellent. And we learned about impulse. What is impulse? Force times time. Yes, and it is also. This is a this question has two answers, and that is indeed the first answer. What's the second answer? Um, mass times time. No. No. Momentum times velocity. No. no. Momentum? No. Okay. Change in momentum. A delta momentum. Yes. So impulse is force times time. It is also change in momentum. Okay. What does that um, mean? Say it again. What does that actually mean, like change momentum? Does that mean just like. In most cases, it is the mass stays constant, and so it's mass times change in velocity. So if you think about a baseball coming down, and then you hit it with a bat. Its velocity is this way one minute, and that way the next minute. Of course, it's the next hundredth of a second, right? Um, and so the mass of the ball doesn't change, but its velocity drastically changes. And so that mass times that change in velocity is the change in momentum. Okay. That was a lot of words and hand waving. Would it be better if I wrote it on the board? No, I think I understand. Usually when I use a lot of words and wave my hands, it used to be dangerous, so. Okay, uh, and so that was the whole lab that we did last week, and we came out with all kinds of things about um, rules with collisions, or answers with collisions. Um, <clears throat> you should know that there are two kinds of collisions. This. What are the two kinds of collisions? You should know them already. Elastic and inelastic. Elastic and inelastic. In both of those, and now that we didn't talk about this in the lab last week, but you may have read it, both types of collisions, what is conserved? Momentum. Momentum is conserved. And that's a fancy word, conserved. What does it mean? Saved. Not changed, is it? If you want to conserve the forest, that means you want to keep it the same today as it was last year or 20 years ago. Okay, you want to not change it. Okay, conserve. So if momentum is conserved, that means the momentum before the collision is the same as the momentum after the collision. Okay, does that make sense? Let's look at your data. Uh, you've got the data right there. Yes. <clears throat> Let's test this idea. Okay. Um, so you remember in the collision we had uh, one sled sitting there and another sled moving in at a certain speed. So this is the speed. Which one was which? Do you remember? This was car two. So car one, velocity initial of car one. Uh, I'm pulling out the data from one of these class crashes. 68 centimeters per second. What was the velocity of car two before the collision? Zero. Okay, now notice this is a double uh, subscript. Velocity, the zero means initial. One means car one. So the initial velocity of car one. This would be the initial velocity of car two. Okay. This mass was 212.54 grams. This mass was 212.11 grams. Okay. Now, after the collision, they were stuck together. Okay, so now we had. of 1 and 2, and it was 31.9 centimeters per second. Okay, so let's do this. 
Jonas. Sir. Do you find the momentum before the collision? How would you do that? Um, it's mass times velocity. Mm -hmm. So, which so you're going to do mass times velocity plus mass times velocity. Correct. This one be an easy one. Yeah. Okay. Lyrical. <laughs> Or you find the momentum after the collision. Now, how are you going to do that? Um, it would be mass times velocity. What's the mass? This mass plus this mass because they're stuck together. Okay. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. So you find momentum after, you find momentum before. Let's see if they are indeed the same, because momentum should be conserved during this collision, right? So let's find it out. centimeters per second times grams, which isn't standard, but that's fine. It's, it's an appropriate unit. Okay. But just do use the same unit so we can compare apples to apples here. Yes. Okay, so this is 1, 4, 4, 5, 2, 0. 0.72 uh, grams centimeters per second. I seem to have come up with an awful big number. Yep, that's right. Okay, so what is it? One, three, five, four, six, point three, three. So they are actually pretty close. Okay, so we're looking at almost 14,000 here and just over 14,000 here. So they're very close. Now, why aren't they exactly the same? Um, because mass one had to accelerate mass two because it's now there's more mass. The velocity is pu it's pushing more mass. Um, That's not why. Air resistance? That's part of it. Friction. Yeah, so here's the thing. Remember, <coughs> we measured this speed. Was a, we had a photo gate. Um, here, and then we had a photo gate. I can't draw a photo gate. We had a photo gate over there, sometime after the collision. But what happened between those two photo gates? They collided. And? Yes, you're right, they collided. And? whole system moved. And anytime something moves, friction happens. And so some momentum was lost to friction. Okay? Yes. Does that kind of make sense? It still seems like some force would have been lost though by pushing the other one. If we could have this be truly frictionless, if we could do it in a vacuum chamber, how you do that in air track on a vacuum chamber, chamber. But if we could do this truly frictionless, there would these two numbers would be exactly the same. Even though it has to push a bigger, even though one more one mass now pushes two masses, 
the momentum would be the same. Notice what happens to the speed. 68, 32. The speed is cut in half. The mass is doubled, but the speed is halved. And so the uh, momentum remains the same. So is that why I spill the rabbit trail, but um That's okay. So I'm looking at doing some EMT training and stuff like that, so I'm talking to a bunch of EMTs. And one of the ladies I talked to told me that uh, she's seen as many deaths from crashes people were going thirty five as people going sixty five in collisions. Is that because no matter what velocity is, if it's that X type of car, it's always gonna say momentum momentum? It's it's the it's the change in momentum, it's the it's the change in speed that kills people. In other words, if they're going 35 and they're hit by a 65 mile an hour car, it's, it's going to kill them. Or if they're going 65 and they hit a 35 mile an hour car, it's going to kill them. It's, uh, it's the change in speed that, that does the damage. That's what caused the pain in your neck. Okay, that actually makes sense. So you kind of buy, the data shows it pretty closely. And if we could narrow this, this, if we could move these photo gates closer and closer together so that we minimize that friction these two numbers, we get closer and closer together. Um, so here's the big point. In all collisions, momentum is conserved. Okay, this is a very concise way of saying momentum is conserved. Okay? There's no change in momentum. Okay? Are you okay with that now? Okay, now here's the catch. What are the two kinds of collisions? Elastic and inelastic. Elastic and inelastic. In <coughs> elastic only, not only is momentum conserved, because remember, this happens in all collisions, but also kinetic energy is conserved. Why is that exactly? Because I, I understand it, I can see it in a rubber band, but why? Because goes back to that deformation idea. In an, in an inelastic collision where they hit and stick, something has to be deformed. It's the only way for things to stick. Okay? What was deformed in the collisions that we did last week? It depended on the pin and the clay. So what was in that little thing? Um, where the pin went into? Play-Doh. Clay, Play-Doh, play right? And what happens to it when a pin goes in it? It sticks. It's deformed. Anytime you stick a pin into Play-Doh, the Play-Doh gets, it has to get out of the way for the pin to fit in there, right? Yes. That's deformation. That is energy absorbed every time. And you say that's not a lot of energy, but it is. It's enough. Let's test it here. What kind of collision is this? Inelastic. So should kinetic energy be conserved? No. Let's see if it is. We see this one's pretty close. It's pretty close. Let's see if kinetic energy is conserved. Okay, how are we going to test, how are we going to test for conservancy of kinetic energy? Um, well, I guess let's think of the velocity. Say that one more time. I guess it would have something to do with velocity. What's the equation for kinetic energy? One half mass times velocity squared. What are the two pieces you need? Mass and velocity. Hey, what are the two pieces you need for momentum? Mass, mass and velocity. velocity. Well, these two are kind of related, aren't they? So basically it's half of... Uh, they're not the same, momentum. though. Because kinetic energy has a half and a square in it. So they're not the same, but they are related. They are similar. Okay. So, uh, again, let's test it, okay? Jonas, find kinetic energy before the collision. One-half mass times velocity squared. 
Corey, you find kinetic energy after the collision. One half of the mass, now remember you've got two masses stuck together here, times the velocity squared. Yes, sir. Okay, let's see how close these are. The amount of momentum we lost was 6.3%. In this collision, that's inelastic, we lost 6.3% of the momentum due to friction. So that's not much, right? So it's some, but not a lot. If you had 100 eggs, you only lost six. Okay? <clears throat> I have two chickens now, I think, in terms of eggs. Okay. Uh, energy. Jonas, you got. So kinetic energy was four nine one three nine two point four eight. All these weird units. <laughs> Grams, centimeters squared over second squared. Okay, are those the units you used? Sir, actually, I didn't look at the units. Oh, but did you, you didn't change any numbers around, did you? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, so what did you get? Um, 21064.0433. Did I write that down right? in here. So 216,000 compared to 491,000. Are these anywhere close to each other? Let me, let me crunch this out for just a second here. Um, <clears throat> This is a fifty six percent loss. See what that does for you? Kinetic energy was not conserved in an inelastic collision. But momentum was. We lost a little bit due to friction, but kinetic energy was not conserved. Can we crunch more numbers real quick? Let's test it for an elastic collision and see if it's conserved. Okay? So I'm going to pull out one of the numbers here. This is what we did last week. And before the collision, we had uh, Traveling at uh, 
71.4 centimeters per second, and its mass was 212.51. Of course, the other one was just sitting there, and its mass was 211.89. But afterwards, it crash, and then afterwards, Car one was sitting there. Remember this collision? One went in, it stopped, the other one went on. Remember that collision? That's what this one is, okay? It's still, the it mass hasn't changed, but the other one, now car two, was moving at 70.9 centimeters per second. Okay? Jonas, kinetic energy before. Corey, kinetic energy after. Yes. Go for it. Yeah, okay. Makes it easier. Definitely, it's much easier to work on. This is correct. Oh. Kinetic energy. Oh, okay. Oh. And half mv squared. Oh, okay, my bad. What exactly would be the mass of um, the collision after, please? Uh, now, afterwards, this is a good question. Afterwards, this one still has a mass of 212.51, and this one has a mass of 211.89. Mass hasn't changed. Mass hasn't changed. In that one, the mass is stuck together. In this one, they did not stick together. So after the collision, only this one has kinetic energy. So what you should do, technically here, is one half this mass times this velocity squared. Of course, what's zero squared? Zero. And what's zero times that? Um, zero. Times a half. Zero. It's still zero. So there's no kinetic energy here because it's not moving. Yes. All of your kinetic energy is in this one. So it's, so it's zero plus one half this mass times this velocity squared. Yes, sir. Okay. World. Two by two with a slit down the middle. We <clears throat> want to know what they were doing with it. I'm sure it's something fun. Go ahead. You got it? Uh, if I got it right. Five, three, two, six, one, zero, oh, point six, two, six, seven. Five hundred forty-one thousand, five hundred thirty-two thousand, almost the same. Uh, 
this is a 1.7% loss. So this is a lot of math to just tell you what I already told you. <laughs> but the point is to show you that this stuff really does describe reality. All collisions, momentum is conserved, whether it's inelastic or elastic. Yeah, no, we didn't crunch these numbers, but can you see that roughly 212 times roughly 71 is roughly the same as roughly 212 times roughly 71. You see how momentum's going to be about the same. Just like before, momentum is conserved in both kinds of collision. But kinetic energy, 56% loss compared to less than 2% loss. Kinetic energy is conserved for elastic collisions. Okay. Does, does this make sense? So there we go. Two kinds of collisions. On all of them, both elastic and inelastic, momentum is conserved. But only inelastic is, only in an elastic collision is kinetic energy also conserved. Okay, does that make sense? Now you need these two tidbits of information to solve problems. So this is kind of like, why are you driving this dead horse into the ground? This is important information that you need to be able to solve problems. Okay. Okay, so we're just about done talking about everything in the book, um, except where it gets very interesting. We still need to talk about angular momentum. We didn't talk about it at all last time. Um, <clears throat> what is angular momentum? Well, let's see. What is momentum? Mass times velocity. Sorry, but actually, let me do this. Um, we started out, we learned a position, x. And then uh, we learned about a speed, which was what? Velocity. Uh -huh. And how do you find that? position over time, right? And then we learned about acceleration, which was? Changing velocity over time. And then we learned about Newton's second law. Force equals mass times acceleration. And now we're learning about momentum. Mass times velocity. And kinetic energy. This is what we've learned so far. Well, we've also learned little snippets of the angular world. Okay, so this is the straight line, linear world. There's a whole other world. All these things that we, we use to describe how things go in a straight line, we can also use an equivalent equation to describe how they go in an angular world. Okay, so instead of talking about where you are, position, in the linear world, by linear, I mean straight line, line, linear, okay? In the angular world, and that's not that, angular, there we go. In the angular world, we're going to talk about what angle are you at? And then, instead of speed, we're going to talk about what angular speed do you have? And what do you think the equation for that is going to be? Let me give you a hand. It looks just like this. Except it's an x, you're going to have a beta. What do you think is next? W? No. Angular acceleration. Just like linear acceleration, you now have angular acceleration. And angular ac linear acceleration was change in velocity over time. What do you think angular acceleration is going to be? Change in w over time change in angular speed over time. Okay? Now, instead of force equals ma, we talked about this one last week, you have torques. And torques, this is where it gets interesting, you need an angular mass. Angular mass
mass is messy. The letter for this is I. <coughs> and instead of uh, A, we're going to have alpha. This is angular mass. Instead of momentum, you're going to have angular momentum. That's where we are now, which is I omega. But your book doesn't give you that equation. It gives you this one. So this is angular momentum. And did you just buy this equation? This is push the I believe button. You get to advanced physics classes, we'll prove it to you. But for now, you just say, no, oh, that's angular momentum. So that's I believe it. <coughs> okay. Mass times velocity times radius? Or yep. Radius of what? I I just put what R stood for. <laughs> yeah, it's a good guess, you're right, it's radius. What's that? Yeah, whatever it is that's spinning, the radius of the thing that's spinning. So what we're talking about here is, when we talk about linear momentum, we're talking about how hard it is to stop it from moving. Okay? If we're talking about angular momentum, what do you think we're talking about? Now about how hard you have to push to start it moving? To start it spinning. Or, once it's already spinning, to stop it from spinning. Okay, so, um, many years ago I used to throw pots. You know what I'm talking about, I mean, pottery. Okay, so you have, a, you have a pottery wheel and the thing spins and you put a chunk of clay. You take a chunk of clay and you slam it down the middle, that's why they call it throwing pots. You get your hands all wet and slippery and then you grab that chunk of clay and you mold it and shape it and you get this nice pretty pot out of it, right? But, notice you start with a spinning wheel. Well, how does that wheel get spinning? The expensive potter's wheels have a motor on them. For those of us who buy not expensive things, <coughs> you have, what you have is you have a big, huge chunk of concrete wheel that's on the ground, about two inches off the ground. This is a wheel, I mean, it's about this big around, solid concrete, about this thick. Heavy. Really stinking heavy wheel, okay? And you sit in a chair, and you got two feet on that big concrete wheel, okay? And you sit there, and you can spin it. Kick it. And that first one. You get that thing going, you kick it really far, and then you get feet away from it. <laughs> and, and then you throw your pot for a little while and it slows down eventually and you get it going again. Okay? My point is, large mass. If you want to have a lot of angular momentum, you gotta have it spinning fast. And the bigger the radius, the harder it is to move. So that's how big the distance it is? Or how big distance it covers? Say it one more time. So this is how big of an area it is? How big of an area it covers? This R depends on where the speed is measured. So if you think about a disc that's spinning, okay, a point, a grasshopper that's sitting out here is going to be moving really quick, and a grasshopper that's sitting really close to the center, it's hardly, it's hardly going to be moving. It'll be turning, but not moving quickly. The air is not blowing through its hair very quickly. And you know grasshoppers have a lot of hair. <laughs> okay. Uh, now, here's where it gets fun. You have watched this. This is linear stuff. Uh, What's that? I just said once you said I said it's on the sinister. <laughs> it is sinister. This is where it gets fun. Uh, I think we can do this. Oh, this is going to be fun. There we go. Uh, -oh. uh, Jonas, would you like to be a guinea pig today? Um, not really, but sure. Okay, good. Corey, uh, we want to get this on the phone, so can you run the camera for a minute? Just make sure that you can see Jonas. Let's move the handle so you can get started. Jonas, um, yes, uh, I don't want to injure you, so I'm giving you some room here, okay? Do you know what's going to happen here? Uh, no, but I don't. 
Okay, so when I give you the word, mm -hmm. I want you to simultaneously take your hands, which were previously here, which means you guys start with them there, and move them out. Okay? And take your feet, which were in, and move them out. Okay, so try doing it right now. Let's do this bigger, bigger chair that we can get. Okay, yeah, sounds good. Right. Let's do this the other way. Sorry. Start with mount. Okay. It's a size. Okay, like this. There we go. I'm more dizzy. Good. Do you need this easy? Uh, it's yeah, not. It should be all right. In. Out. In. Oh, wow. Uh, that's cool. Out. In. Oh, you're moving too slow. Yeah, I get it. There's I get a lot it. of friction in that chair. Yeah. But. I felt Do you see the idea? Yeah. You might want to sit there for a minute until you. Settled. No, I think I think I'm fine. Okay. I get dizzy, but I get undizzy fast. So. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so what did you notice, Corey, as the outside observer in this? What happened when he brought his arms and legs in? Oh, that's good. We'll get it. It seemed to get faster. It went faster. Why? Because. In all collisions, momentum is conserved. Guess what? So is angular momentum. What? Collisions? Collisions? What crashed into Jonas? <laughs> Here's the thing. Jonas changed his angular mass. Okay, so now here's the catch. Jonas, you ready for this? Yep. In mass, over here, mass is just how many protons, neutrons, and electrons you have. Okay? Over here, angular mass not only depends on how many protons, neutrons, and electrons you have, but where they are relative to the pivot point. So, when your arms were in and your legs were in, where was the pivot point in that chair? Uh, the center. Yeah, that, that beam Part that you're sitting on, right? Yeah. It was your, all your weight was right next to that center point. You had a low angular mass. But then when you put your legs out and your arms out, where was all that mass? Out. You increased your angular mass. Okay, so let me write this out. Out of board space. L initial must equal L final. How did I get that? Hey, L. Guess where I got that? What does this say? Delta L equals zero. What does that mean? Angular momentum. It's a mouthful, isn't it? <laughs> Angular momentum is conserved, right? Yes, sir. What does delta mean? Change it. Yeah, how do we write that mathematically? Delta. delta. Uh, expand. Well, oh, it's kind uh, of a pyramid shape. Final, <laughs> final <laughs> equals initial, or initial equals final. Delta means change. It means final minus initial. Uh, remember that? Yeah. Delta always means final minus initial. In this case, a delta L, so it's LF minus L naught. Okay. And L final minus L naught must equal zero, right? No, just add that L naught to the other side. And you have this. So 
this is another way of saying angular momentum is conserved. You want it to be the same before the collision and after the collision. It does not change before and after. Okay? Well, let's write this out. I omega must equal I We had a small angular mass and a high. Wait, wait, how do we start out? You start out with your arms out, right? No. We started in. Oh no, we changed that. Yeah, yeah. We started out with a high angular mass. Then he brought his legs in, and arms in. What happened to your angular mass? Decreased. Decreased it. Why? Because um, it was pulled. In. All that mass went to the center. Okay. So this went down. So what must happen to this? In order for this side to equal this side, the only way that can work is if this goes up. By the way, this is how ice skaters do this. So they, I don't know if you've watched this. On the Olympics, Winter Olympics, right? You get an ice skater out there, and she does this. Notice this, watch, arms out, and then she spins herself and brings her arms in. Why would she do that? So she can go faster. She spins faster. That's the exact same trick. It's just the same thing we just did over here, only you're not as graceful as an Olympic ice skater. I need a little practice. <laughs> uh, a little bit chair spinner. <laughs> Need a better chair to do this. Yeah. Okay. Does, does this idea kind of make sense? So the point is, this idea, this parallel between the linear world and the angular world, we're continuing to develop it. Okay. And we will continue to do so. And moreover, angular momentum is conserved just like linear momentum. Whew. That was a lot of talking. Let's try some problems. Okay, how about I do the first one, and then you all can take over after right that. Ah, run away! No. Okay, so let's go to um, the extra practice problems. Please don't make us do number four. Uh, let's start with number four. Well, if you're doing it, then right. <laughs> Have you already looked at these, the extra practice problems? And you've already decided that number four is not a good one? It's rather um, scary. <clears throat> and I found it kind of interesting that here, oh. in the first problem, you know, he refers to a famous golf person in our time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I expected. Maybe Hot horse ball. No, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Have you done all these already, Corey? Have you tried them? Okay. Uh, which ones was the, was the hard one for you? Number four. Yes, sir. Did you did you get all of these? Oh um, no, sir, I did not get all of them. Okay. <laughs> which ones should we wrestle with today? I mean, because that's the point of us getting together is to me help you with the ones that you couldn't do on your own anyway, right? So which ones couldn't you handle on your own? Uh, how, about, how about I do number four with y'all? Yes, Because uh, that's, that's the one with the most words. It must be the hardest, right? <laughs> OK. Jonas, you want to read it for us? Sure. I'll write down the information. What is the recoil velocity of a 2.25 pound beam? Wait, wait, Okay. Turn your camera over here. Uh, two. Oh. Maybe this. All right. So, what is the velocity? Uh, what, is the, what is the recoil velocity of a two point two five pound BB gun?
That's a light gun. It is 2.25 pounds. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, pound Buga that fires at a uh, 0 0.177. I least got the caliber right. Caliber copper BP at a f uh, 320 foot per second. Okay. Uh, the speed of the BB is what now? Uh, 320 foot per second. That's really low. Okay, and this is the caliber. Cal is a point zero. I uh, know zero point one seven seven. Zero point one seven seven. That's caliber. Yeah. Okay. Um, here's some additional information for the problem. The caliber is the diameter of the sphere BB in inches. The volume of the sphere is calculated with a V equals three fourths pi r uh, cubed. Okay. Um, yes. The density of the copper is 0.323 pounds per inches. Uh, what is the density? Cubed. Uh, 0.323 pounds per inch cubed. It's uh, the diameter of the bullet. It's the diameter of the bullet. That's what this thing means. This diameter. Of the bullet, not of the. The B. Well, it's kind of the bullet. It's, it's, it's the diameter of the BB. Unfortunately, BBs, it's not like regular bullet. BBs are perfectly spherical. So, perfect is a loose, loosely used word there. But they're roughly spherical, so we can now calculate it. They're pretty painful too. What's that? They're very painful too. Depending on how fast they are, yes they can. This one won't be very painful at all. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about what this means. What is a recoil velocity? How much it pulses. Yeah, so you've got this thing pushed up against your shoulder, and you, you pull the trigger, and it propels the bullet forward, but remember, Oh, I didn't tell you about this earlier. In all collisions, and explosions, momentum is conserved. Now, really, I didn't have to add that and explosions part, because an explosion is the same thing as a collision. Not at all the same. Okay, think about this for a second. In my hand, this is a mental experiment, okay? In my hand is a hand grenade. Do you all see it? You know what a hand grenade looks like. Okay, imagine it is in my hand. We want to keep this a thought experiment, I promise, okay? So in my hand is a hand grenade, okay? Now I pull the pin, and what happens? Uh, the lever shoots off and it pushes the grenade out of your hand. Okay, but let's pretend that it stays in my hand. Okay. What does it do? Three seconds, and then it goes boom. Three seconds, and then it explodes. This is an explosion. So, okay, so what happens to the, the chunks of metal that are all over the side of this thing? Um, they shred your hand. Ignoring what happens to me, what does the thing do? They go out. They, uh, the sun goes out this way, and this way, and this way. All directions. But all directions. The outside just fragments into a bunch of pieces and it shoots yep. out. Really this out. is an explosion, right? In all directions, okay, so in all directions, okay, you got that in your head? Yeah. Okay, now take that video that's in your head and put it in rewind backwards. What happens? The old That's a really cool video to look up online. People have done now, it. What does a collision look like? Car here, car here. Cool. Oh, isn't it the same thing? Just in reverse. Collisions and explosions are the same thing, it's just explosions happen in reverse. So that's why I don't need to say all collisions and explosions, because a collision and an explosion are the same thing. It's just one happens in reverse. So momentum must be conserved there as well. Okay, does this kind of make sense? Do you see the video in your head? The wrinkle of the nose says no. <laughs> okay. It's pretty spectacular.
it's actually people have done it before and it's pretty amazing. Kind of scary. They think people do it with their hands. Though. No, not with their hands, no. <laughs> I don't think it was that stupid. Oh yeah, this is perfect. Okay, here we go. Come on over here. <laughs> this, whatever this was, has recently been exploded. Look at all those things colliding together. Look at all those things colliding together. One big collision. Also oh, dropped the ground. <laughs> wow. Oh, come on, do that backwards now. Oh, I wanted to see it go back. Oh, good, here we go. Crashing together. <laughs> okay, I think we got the idea here. Okay. What is there? Well, you can watch YouTube yeah. videos later. Okay, so you see what I'm talking about? It's, it's objects that are moving towards each other and they hit and stick. What kind of collision is this? Not elastic. This is an inelastic collision. It'd be cool if it's an elastic explosive. That wouldn't even make sense. Like. You'd have to have it. Yeah, it can't be. Yeah. Okay. It's cool to think about. But here's my point: Is kinetic energy conserved in an explosion? No. No. Why? Because there's it's uh, all potential. Because a whole lot of potential, but momentum is conserved, but not kinetic energy, because it is an inelastic collision explosion. Okay. So. My point is, all those words are to say is that momentum is conserved. The momentum before the collision must be the same as the momentum after the collision. In this case, explosion. Okay? So uh, you've got the gun on your shoulder, you're aiming down the way, and what is the momentum of the system? Now that's the gun and the bullet before you pull the trigger. Zero. Why? It's not going anywhere. Nothing is moving. So we're going to have the mass of the gun plus the mass of the bullet times this initial speed, which was what? Zero. Zero. Is that because they don't have any mass? No. no they have mass, they just aren't moving. So there's no momentum initially. Okay, does this make sense? After the collision, explosion, are they stuck together? Yes. They better not be. It's not a very good gun. Okay? <clears throat> so now you've got mass of the gun times the velocity of the gun plus mass of the bullet times velocity of the bullet. Okay? So you have batteries on one bar right now. Okay. When it runs out, let me know. I've got another battery. Okay. Okay? So this makes sense? And, and notice this plus this have to add up to zero. Okay, now let's do this. Uh, is mass, is that ever negative? I don't is it possible for you to have negative mass? Helium. That still has mass, positive mass. Well, this it's just less buoyant than the surrounding air. It's less dense than the surrounding air, but it still has positive mass. So if you're in a vacuum and there's no air, helium would not sink to the bottom. Yep. 
I never thought of it like that. Yeah, it's kind of weird, but... It's, it's like oil, it's. basically, in, in liquids. Yep, exactly. Um, yeah, you put oil and water, oil goes to the top, it seems to float, but if there's no water there, oil goes right to the bottom. It's not to say that oil is massless or negative mass. It's just... Could you theoretically have a negative mass object? Like... Um, no, it doesn't even make sense. Okay. Uh, so mass, always positive. So this is a positive number, and this is a positive number. Always. Bullet. Going forwards. Forwards would be positive number. Now how can these two things that are both positive add up to this number over here and be zero? What's the only way? One of those has to be negative. And is it this one? No. <laughs> it's got to be velocity g. So what does that mean? That means if you shoot a bullet forward, the gun has to go backwards. You can't get around it. Does this make sense? If you could get around it, momentum would not be conserved and you just broke all the laws of physics. Key can't. ultimate gun. You can't do that. You will have a gun that goes backwards, guaranteed. So you will have a recoil velocity, guaranteed, get used to it. Uh oh. How are you going to fix it? Okay, so. We're going to solve the problem in a minute, but just step outside the problem for a second. How can you minimize the recoil of your gun? Good shooting position. Okay, that helps. Brace yourself. Yeah, that helps a lot. What'd you say now? Get a start home gun. Actually, that makes it worse. Okay. Because remember, this number here, the speed of the bullet, if it's a good gun, is big. The mass of the bullet is pretty small, but the speed of the bullet is huge. It should be if you're doing if you get a good gun, right? So this is a big number. Okay? How can you make this number small? Um, Wait. If you have a big old honking gun. The heavier your gun is, the smaller the recoil velocity has to be. Does that make sense? So, okay. But the problem is, if, and, and it's easier to aim if you've got it mounted as well, but that's all it is. Okay, so just because yeah. I know of guns and scam, I think. Yeah. <laughs> you know what a min gun is? A who? A min gun. No. Mini gun. So okay. basically, basically it's six. Mini, I understand. It's small. Six? No, it's not. It's six barrels uh, it's attached. Not small. It's six barrels attached around the motor, and it's basically twelve barrels, and the okay. gun cycles a bullet through each barrel as it goes by. It's like incredibly fast, like yeah. thousands of rounds per second. Well, in shooting it. One of its character is, is extremely low, a recoil. Now it's running through an Why? Because it's shooting big honk and shells like 20 millimeter or 50s or something like that. It should have a large amount of recoil, but <clears throat> real world mount a helicopter or something like that, you can't even notice recoil. It's like you, uh, using a hose almost. You, just, you shoot things, but it doesn't necessarily have any too much recoil. Because it's constantly shooting it? Yeah, well, it, it's almost constantly because. It's almost. It, if you have each of the barrels firing. The first firings. shot, like if you were to do it one at a time, I'm sure you'd yeah. feel the notice, notice the recoil. Yeah. But because it's a constant spray of bullets out of it, uh -huh. uh, it's, it's like you said, shooting a hose. It's, it's, it's more like a, a rocket engine. It is propelling you forwards, but it's a constant propulsion. So you, so you don't want really to register as recoil. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Um, okay. So there we go. So that was a side note. With all that said, we have to solve this. So we, our quest is to find this number, because that's what the question asked for. Recoil means it goes the other way. We have to find it. Now, if only we knew the mass of the gun, the mass of the bullet, and the speed of the bullet. We do know the mass. I'll tell you what. I'll do this one for you. You've got the speed of the bullet. Y'all do the rest. Well, we can find the mass because we know we know what the weight is. Which one do you want to do now? For the gun. Okay. Okay. So you want to find the mass of the gun. How are you going to do it? We'll divide uh, it by the rate of gravity. So that you okay. divide by so, nine point eight. No, no, no. Divide by thirty-two feet per second. Okay. So weight is equal to mass times gravity. So you're pulling that out. And you're saying, oh, okay, we well, you know weight. I know gravity, I can find mass, therefore mass 
is weight divided by gravity, which is 2.25 pounds divided by 32 feet per second squared. And what is the mass of this gun? Uh, 0 0.0703125. 0 0.07, who now? 0 0.0703125. And what are those crazy units? Pounds per pounds times feet per second squared? Slugs. Oh. Slugs. It's nothing to do with the slimy critters that I hate in the garden. Okay. This there. Okay, one down, two to go. How are we going to get the mass of the bullet? We know the density and we know its diameter. Okay, and we get Close. the mass by multiplying these two together. You have to remember, have we done this equation yet? Density is equal to mass over volume. Have you seen this? Have we, have we seen this equation? What is density? How many um, elect how many molecules are in an object? Yeah. So um, if you have a six inch by six inch by six inch cube of lead in your hand, is it heavy? Yeah, it's really honking heavy. Um, I've got one down the hall. I'll show it to you in a minute. Um, if you have a six inch by six inch chunk of styrofoam. It's the same size in your same hand or in the other hand. Is it heavy? But they're the same size. How can one be heavier than the other? It's density. Lead is much more dense than styrofoam. Okay, so this is all density is. How much mass per volume is there? That's all it is. This is the ratio. This, stand, this is the Greek letter rho. It stands for density. Density is mass over volume. So multiply both sides by V. Which would be so mass is equal to density times volume. Now we're going to have to be careful here because, but anyway, let's, let's work through this. It equals uh, 103. Okay. Wait, wait, how are you going to find the volume? And no, no, wrong, wrong, wait, sorry. Diameter. Um, is diameter volume? No. We can find it from. Do you know the diameter of a sphere? This is one of those equations from geometry you just plugged in the memory banks of your head and, and now is when you pull it out and you use it to yeah. remember it from geometry. Here's the equation for you. It's 4 thirds pi r cubed. So we just plug in... You know 4 thirds, you know pi, where are we going to get radius? From half the diameter. We got the diameter, half of that is the radius. Okay. One seven five pi. Okay. So now let's work out our units here. We've got. Oh, so, so oh, okay, I found I found the volume. Yeah, volume. What is it? Uh, point uh, four one seven zero. Approximately. And inches. So this would be inches cubed. Then we can plug in the density. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do density times volume. So we're going to have. 0.323, and let's write out the units because they, they're throwing a, uh, a curveball at us here. Wiley, he loves to do that. Pounds per inch cubed times 0 0.4170 inch cubed. What do you get? Uh, 0.13469. What do we know? 1, 3, 4, 6, Niner, one. And what are my units? Pounds. But I thought it should give me mass. Uh oh. How did I get pounds? It's because Wiley, in his Wiley ways, did not give us proper density units. That's okay. This is a problem of an exercise of dealing with wrong units, so. Let's deal with this in a minute now. Okay, so now we, we don't have mass here. What do we have? Weight. We have weight. Weight of what, though? Weight of the bullet. Oh. 
do we need? Such. Oh, we should divide it by um. Divide by 32. 32. Okay. So what's the mass of the bullet? Uh, point zero zero four two zero. Point zero zero four two zero. Zero slugs. Why okay. loves giving you these problems like that? Okay, so now we take this and plug that in right there. We take this and plug it in right there. Set it all equal to zero and solve for the recoil velocity of the gun. We're still missing the G, are we? That's what we're trying to find. Yep. So this oh. times this plus this times this must. So we just need to get zero. we need to get the, you know, everything but this. So we should get V G by itself. Yep. So that would be V G equals. How would you do that? Divide each side by V G. Okay, let's let's do the math. So let me write this out. Uh, we're gonna have zero equals mass of the gun times velocity of the gun plus mass of the bullet times velocity of the bullet. I'm going to subtract this side over there, okay? So I have mass of the bullet times velocity of the bullet equals mass of the gun times velocity of the gun. You see how, oh, yeah. negative sign. Mm -hmm. See how I did that? Yeah. And divide both sides by mass. Now I have velocity of the gun is equal to that. Plug in your numbers, bada bing, bada boom, what do you get? The gun is negative 19.11 feet per second. And that's the recoil velocity. And the negative means it goes backwards. Okay? Does that make sense? Yes, sir. I think mm -hmm. I didn't know what a caliber was, yeah. and I also did not see exactly how you applied it to a sphere. Yes, yeah, there are so many, the, that's the problem with this problem is that there's so many other details. It kind of distracts from the main point, conservation of momentum. Okay? Oh, that was the point. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's your question, Jonas? I'm not sure yet. Okay. Huh. I don't think I have a question, I just okay. probably need to work some I haven't uh, let's see. Can we get a drink? Yeah. Let's take a break for a couple minutes. Then we stop this and change yeah. the battery. Yeah, and then y'all can.